Welcome to this quick guide on expanding solar systems using the IQ Combiner 6C. Whether you're adding PV, batteries, or both, this solution simplifies installation and enhances system performance. By the end of this video, viewers will be able to understand how the IQ Combiner 6C simplifies PV and battery system expansions, identify key differences between NEM multi-tariff and non-NEM multi-tariff system behaviors, and follow the correct commissioning steps for Enphase and third-party system expansions. Why expand a system? It's all about resilience, flexibility, and a better homeowner experience. Adding backup capabilities helps protect against outages. Expanding PV capacity supports growing energy needs. And with Enphase, even third-party PV systems appear unified in the app, giving homeowners a single seamless view of their energy system. The IQ Combiner 6C is designed to simplify system expansions and reduce installation complexity. Whether you're adding more PV, batteries, or both, this solution makes it easier. You can add PV or PV and batteries to a site with existing Enphase or third-party PV and configure it as NEM multi-tariff. This is particularly important for homeowners in California who wish to retain net energy metering for their existing system. Configuring the system as NEM multi-tariff allows them to comply with the rules of utility companies and continue to earn credit at the retail rate for energy exported by the existing system. And you can add batteries to any site with existing Enphase or third-party PV if they are non-NEM multi-tariff systems, such as NEM 3.0 or outside California. Please note, system expansions can be backup, either whole or partial home, or grid tied. It's important to properly commission expansion systems with the Enphase Installer app for correct system operation and compliance with the rules of California utility companies. For expansion system commissioning, where the existing system is an Enphase system, you'll follow these steps. Open the existing site, and on step two, add a gateway by tapping the plus sign. If the site is in California, you'll be asked if the added gateway is for a NEM multi-tariff system expansion site. If it has NEM1 or NEM2 status, select Yes. If the existing system is on the net billing tariff, aka NEM3.0, you would select No. If the site is outside California, you won't get this question. Then you'll be prompted to select an option for Integrated Load Control Configuration. If you answered Yes to the previous question, select NEM Multi-Tariff Expansion. If you answered No to the previous question, select PV Shedding. If the existing system is a third-party string inverter system, you'll follow these steps. You must create a new site. Again, if the site is in California and it has NEM1 or NEM2 status, select NEM Multi-Tariff Zero Export for the grid connection type. If the existing system is on the net billing tariff, aka NEM 3.0, select that option. If the site is outside California, select the applicable grid connection type. Then you'll be prompted to select an option for integrated load control configuration. If it's a NEM multi-tariff system, select NEM multi-tariff expansion. If it is a net billing tariff system or a site outside California, select PV shedding. Let's look at an example of system expansion with a fourth generation grid forming backup system. This could be a California NEM multi-tariff system or a non-NEM multi-tariff system. This expansion system would add backup power capability as well as save the homeowner more money. The existing system is PV only and could be Enphase or another brand of inverter. The system expansion is comprised of an IQ meter caller for isolation from the grid, an IQ combiner 6C, IQ 8 series PV, and an IQ battery 10C. The existing PV is wired into the load control spot in the IQ combiner 6C. And if the system goes into backup operation, the existing PV would be disconnected and turn off. With a future software update, the existing PV will be able to continue operating when the system is off grid if sizing and design restrictions are met. The system will behave differently if it's a California NEM multi tariff system versus a non NEM multi tariff system. Here's an example of system behavior for a non NEM multi tariff system, such as net billing tariff or outside California. NEM multi-tariff rules don't apply, so the existing PV system can charge the battery of the expansion system, and the PV system can export power to the grid. 
In this example, the expansion PV system and the existing PV system are producing a combined total of 4.7 kilowatts. The IQ battery is charging at 2 kilowatts. The loads are using 1.2 kilowatts. And the remaining 1.5 kilowatts is being exported to the grid. In California, NEM multi tariff rules apply. Legacy systems can't charge batteries, and the new PV and battery of the expansion system cannot export to the grid. In this example, the expansion PV system is producing 2.2 kilowatts, 1.2 kilowatts is being used by the loads, and the battery is charging at a reduced rate of 1 kilowatt compared to the previous example. The expansion system isn't exporting any power to the grid. The existing PV system is producing 2.5 kilowatts, and all of the 2.5 kilowatts of power is being exported to the grid, significantly more than the previous example, thereby earning the homeowner higher export credits under their NEM1 or NEM2 agreement. Now let's take a look at a grid tied example. In grid tied setups, you add PV and possibly batteries as well, but the system would lack backup capability. This option may be desirable if saving more money is the only priority and backup power isn't needed. The expansion system consists of the IQ Combiner 6C, IQ8 PV, and optionally batteries as well. Note, there is no IQ meter caller in this configuration. To enable consumption monitoring, consumption CTs must be installed on L1 and L2 of the utility feeders to the main load panel and an additional set of consumption CTs must be installed on L1 and L2 of the existing PV. The CT leads must be wired in parallel to port number 8 in the IQ Combiner 6C. Let's zoom in to see how this is done. Consumption CTs are installed on the utility L1 and L2 feeders with the direction arrows pointing towards the IQ Combiner 6C. The additional consumption CTs are installed on the existing PV L1 and L2 also with the direction arrows pointing toward the IQ Combiner 6C. Both L1 consumption CTs are wired in parallel with inline splices to the L1 ports on the header, and the same is done for both L2 CTs. The header is connected to port 8 of the IQ Combiner 6C, which is labeled LC slash consumption CT. Homeowners with Enphase expansion systems will have a unified interface in the Enphase app, which displays combined solar production of the existing PV and the expansion PV system. The exception would be for grid-tied systems. Since the consumption and existing PV are measured by parallel CTs, the IQ Combiner 6C can't monitor the existing PV. The commissioning flow for expansion systems with batteries varies depending on whether the system has backup capabilities or if it's grid-tied without backup. This decision tree shows us the commissioning flow for whole home backup expansion systems. First, determine if the existing system is an Enphase system or a third party system. If it's an Enphase system, you will open the existing site ID in the installer app and add a gateway. Then, determine if it's a NEM multi tariff system in California. If yes, you then must set load control to NEM MT. If no, you then must set load control to PV shedding. The NEM multi tariff and load control settings are critical to the proper operation of the system and compliance with the NEM multi tariff rules of California utility companies. Going back to the top of the decision tree, if the system is a third party PV string system, you will create a new site ID in the installer app. Then determine if it's a NEM multi tariff system in California. If yes, set the grid connection type to NEM multi tariff zero export in step one. Then set load control to NEM MT. If the system is outside California and it's not a NEM multi tariff system, you must set the load control to PV shedding. Please note existing PV will be shed when the system goes off grid for all scenarios, whether load control is set to NEM MT or PV shedding. The difference is for NEM MT, in addition to PV being shed, the new system is zero export and the existing PV doesn't charge batteries. Here's the commissioning flow for grid tied expansion systems. First, determine if the existing system is an Enphase system or a third party inverter system. If it's an Enphase system, open the existing site ID and add a gateway. You'll be asked if the system is NEM multi tariff zero export in California. Select yes or no. Regardless of the answer, you will set load control to PV shedding. 
Please note, the term PV shedding is just a configuration name. Since the system is grid tied, there is no shedding of the PV. The option is chosen to inform the system that existing PV is connected to the load control port in the combiner. Back to the top of the decision tree. If the system is a third party PV string system, you must create a new site ID. If the system is NEM multi tariff zero export in California, you must set the grid connection type in step 1 to NEM multi tariff zero export. Then set load control to PV shedding, regardless of whether or not it's a NEM multi tariff system. With IQ Combiner 6C, expanding your solar system is easier, smarter, and future ready. Thanks for watching.